Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew, the ninth, ninth chapter, verses 35 through 38. And it talks about compassion. Jesus traveled among all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, announcing the good news of the kingdom and the healing of every disease and every sickness. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless. They were a sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for this harvest. So ends the reading of our word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I thought with this scripture, it talks about the harvest, and um, this weekend is Sweet Corn Festival, one of the things that starts the the harvest in our area um, with sweet corn. And I love sweet corn. And I have found a couple good places, farm stands, because I love to buy it from farm stands as opposed to the grocery store, because more money goes to the farmers that grow it. Uh, Because once you pass it up the food chain and everything, you know, the, the portion that they get is less and less. So I always enjoy the summertime to buy, veg, you know, fruits and vegetables from farm stands. But, you know, festival, feast and festivals were very important in the Bible. Uh, there were three major festivals in the Bible. There was Pesach. These are Hebrew names. Pesach was uh, 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 a festival, and which correlates to what we call Passover. Now, Passover was the beginning of the the church year for the Hebrews. It's also the beginning of the church year for uh, the Jews. Passover. Now, it usually occurs around the first week of April, right? You know, we celebrate in the United States, New Year's Eve is our, our New Year's Day is our new year. But in the Christian calendar, it would have been in April. Now, for Christianity, what is the new year? What kind of people are we? We're Easter people. So Easter Day is the, considered the, uh, the first day of the Christian calendar is on uh, uh, Easter. Now, Passover... Uh, the Bible study group that uh, has been meeting and stuff, uh, uh, the last couple weeks we've been talking about the Passover meal in the Bible. And the Passover meal in the Bible, in the Gospels, is the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. It occurred during Passover, except in the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, which doesn't focus so much on a meal, it focuses on foot washing, but it, that occurs prior to Passover. And then Jesus is actually arrested during Passover in the Gospel of John. But Passover is, um, is considered the first festival of the, of the year, of the beginning of the year. Now Passover, Passover is when the Lord passed over, right? They, people, it, it goes back to the Israelites the Israelites were instructed to present their first male goat or lamb as an offering, and then they would take the blood, smear it on the doorpost, which they still do today. Jews still do this today during Passover. And then they would celebrate with a Passover meal, which was called the Seder meal. And the Seder meal had certain things on it to remind them so they would remember their heritage. You know, each item on a, pa- on a Seder plate had significance in uh, Jewish history or uh, uh, the history of Israel. Now, right along with that, they would have a feast, uh, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Now, the unleavened bread is bread without yeast. It's kind of a flat bread. 
And to me, I love yeast. That's what gives bread the flavor, right? But um, for the Hebrews and the Jews, they would leave the yeast out because the yeast was um, a sign of sin and evil in the world. So they would leave the yeast out of the bread and they would have this feast of the unleavened bread. Uh, and also a way that they would signify that is it would signify about the rush. You know, people would be hurried to have this feast because of Passover, the Lord passing over. They wanted to get it done before that. So leaving the yeast out was signifying that they were in so much of a hurry, they left an ingredient out of their bread. But uh, more commonly, the yeast, uh, uh, the yeast refers to sin or, uh, sin or the evil of the world. So they leave it out and then they would have that meal uh, of the feast of the unleavened bread. Now the next festival, um, uh, the next festival is Shavat. Uh, unleavened bread. Um, Shavat would be the next festival, but right before Shavat would be the feast of first fruits. What's first fruits? It's our tithe. Our tithe and our offering is pretty much what our first fruits are. Anything we give to God first and whatever's left over is basically ours. Uh, first fruits was also the first fruits of their crops. They would present those to the temple. Uh, it was always the best of their crops that they would present to the Lord as an offering uh, to God. So that would be the feast of the first fruits. And then they would have the feast of weeks or a festival called Shabbat. That's the second festival of the Bible, Shabbat. And the Feast of the Weeks is considered Pentecost. Now, we are in the middle of Pentecost. In fact, we're week 11 of Pentecost. Pentecost in the uh, Christian calendar is the longest season in the Christian calendar. It's 26 weeks. So we're like right almost in the middle of Pentecost. So it's the Feast of Weeks. But it also, uh, the festival that surrounds that area is Shabbat. Um, and then the last, uh, then they would have something called the Feast of the Trumpets. The Feast of the Trumpets was something that they would blow trumpets. Think of our New Year's Eve. You know, we blow the horns and everything that comes over from the Feast of the Trumpets. The Feast of the Trumpets was to announce that the harvest was ready to pick. To get, gather everyone together and they would have a blessing at the temple. And, um, and the harvest was ready to begin. And that's why we have the scripture today. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Okay? And this Feast of the Trumpets would last seven days. Seven is a very important number. And it would start on the first day of the week and last for seven days. Now, every seventh year of the Feast of the Trumpets, what was it? The year of Jubilee. So every seven years, they would have the year of Jubilee. Everyone would let their uh, land rest. They wouldn't plant any crops that year. And all their debts would be forgiven. It was a way for the, the Jewish and the Hebrew people to kind of reset. To reset. Now for us, Pentecost has a very significant thing. is because the Pente Pentecost is basically the beginning of the Christian church. It's when uh, Jesus ascended into heaven and sent down our helper, the Holy Spirit. So for us, Pentecost is all about the Holy Spirit. And it's the, like I said, it's the longest festival. Um, and then um, 
after the Feast of the Trumpets and the feast, uh, feast of the Weeks ended, it would all lead up to the Day of Atonement. And that was another thing that the, uh, the Feast of the Trumpets was to announce is the Day of Atonement is coming. It's where you would offer all your sins at the temple. You would go to the temple and you would tell the rabbi, this is what I've done. And, this, and then you would present your sacrifice and you would receive a blessing uh, for that. Uh, so that would be the, um, the Day of Atonement. Now for the Hebrews and the Jews, especially it's very important during Pesach, Shabbat, and the next one that I'm going to talk about, those festivals is they would do a pilgrimage to Jerusalem where the temple was. Because those were the three times during the year that you would go to the temple to present your sacrifice or to, to basically hear the teachings of the rabbi or, uh, in, um, and, and also pay your um, uh, tax, your temple tax, would be the days that you would go to the temple. So during Pesach, uh, Shabbat, and then you would have the Day of Atonement. Now, the Day of Atonement for us is a little different because Carissa was right. What did Jesus do for us? You know, he died on the cross. He atoned our sins. So instead of us atoning, Jesus atoned for us. Okay, that's atonement. And in Christian theology, there's about six theories of atonement. And I'm not going to get into them because I could go on forever about the theories of atonement and why God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. It's, uh, so that's the day of atonement. And then that would lead up to the Feast of the Booths or the Tabernacles. And that would be the third uh, festival that they would have during the year. And it's Sakat. Again, people would go to, uh, their, they would make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the temple, and during that time, or they would uh, prepare meals at home uh, uh, to, to basically honor God. So we have Passover, the unleavened bread, the first fruits, the feast of the weeks, the feast of the trumpets, which uh, we talked about that today with the year of Jubilee, uh, but we are actually right at the Feast of the Weeks, right in the middle of Pentecost or Shabbat, okay? If you look at a Jewish calendar, I mean, they have a lot of, um, a, a lot of different holidays. The day of, um, uh, I think it's the Feast of the Trumpets is Yom Kippur, um, I didn't write all the, how the, the Jewish holidays line up with all this. But this actually goes all the way back 2,000 years before Christ. You know, when, they, uh, when the Israelites started all these feasts to basically honor God. Uh, the big portion of them re revolved around agriculture. So it was when they planted their crops, they presented their first fruits of their crops. The days of the trumpet, we go pick our crops and stuff. And then the day of atonement is when we, we basically offer our sins or give thanks for our crops uh, to the temple. And then our feast of booths is when we offer everything back to God for the coming up for the next year. And then it starts back over with Passover uh, with that. Um, there is um, also a couple other feasts, which I didn't put in here, uh, but there's a feast of, um, um, uh, a feast of dedication, which uh, occurs in our Advent time. The feast of dedication uh, in the Jewish would be Hanukkah, or the lights, Okay. Uh, that did not come until later. Um, uh, part of the problem about, you know, when was Jesus born? December 25th? That's the day we have on our calendar that he was born on December 25th. 
but there's a problem when we go back to all those calendars because our calendar today is based on the Gregorian calendar, and then before that was the Julian calendar, and then they had the Hebrew calendar before that. The Hebrew calendar only has 10 months in it. And I read something a couple weeks ago where NASA says the most accurate calendar there is is the Hebrew calendar because it takes in consideration both the lunar cycle and the solar cycle. The Julian calendar takes in consideration just the solar cycle. And the Gregorian, it's the lunar cycle. So, and what happens every four years on our calendar? It's leap year. We have to add a day, right? Uh, the Hebrew calendar is accurate within one second a year. So that's why, uh, uh, like NASA, thinks that the Hebrew calendar is the most accurate calendar that there is. Uh, we have 12 months. The Julian calendar has 13. I got that wrong. The Julian calendar is the lunar cycle because it has 13 months. We are the solar, which has 12 months. So, it's not so much of a sermon, but did we learn, you know, we can see how the festivals and the feast, and I thought since we had Sweet Corn Fest, it'd be a good chance to kind of do a little Bible study on uh, the different festivals that we have during the year uh, and, and how they line up with our faith. Um, uh, because we, we garner a lot from these festivals in our, even the church today uh, of that. Um, but going back to our Bible scripture, it talks about Jesus healing the diseases and every sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. You know, this week with, or this weekend with Sweet Con Festival, I, I, I love to watch people. And, you know, there's, you usually can tell your church people, the people that go to church on Sunday, but when you look in the faces, the faces in the crowd, that's who Jesus is talking about, that he had compassion that they were troubled and helpless. They were a sheep without a shepherd. And then that's why he says to his disciples, the size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine. The population of Mendota is 7,000 people. What if we looked at that harvest? The size of the harvest is bigger than we can imagine. But there are few workers in biblical times, there was few workers. We say today we don't have enough people in the church. You know, the last few weeks we've been talking about that beloved community. And somebody told me last week that, you know, they remembered something that I said. If we just go out and said thank you to people. Thank you from the heart. That's the compassion that Jesus is talking about. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that you have, the message of the harvest and the workers are few. Thank you for all the feasts and the festivals that we have, the, 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 the Pesach and the Shabbat and the Sukkot and all the feasts that go along with it. Thank you for Sweet Corn Fest. That it's a chance that we can bring our community get together. People from far and wide come for class reunions or just reunions with their family or just to see old friends. Be with each one of us. That open our eyes, open our hearts uh, to, to the many people in our community, the many needs. Be with the food pantries, be with the shelter pads uh, as they reach out to, to care for those that are less fortunate. Be with our church and be with each one of us. We ask this all in Jesus' name.
Amen.